let's create a new NX workspace for building various online stores. And I'll use the empty preset. I'll say no to NX Cloud for now. We'll enable that and see what it's all about in a bit. Once that's done creating the workspace, I'll see the Intuit and open VS Code. Hmm, a bunch of files in here, but let's focus on this apps folder for now, which is empty. So let's add an app. I want to build an API using Nest.js. So I'll add the Narwhal Nest plugins to my workspace. And once it's installed, I'll ask NX to generate a new Nest app and I'll call it Nest API for now. And we can see that it created a bunch of files and updated some existing ones. And if we have a look in the apps folder, we have our API in there with a linter config and a just config. And if we dig in a bit deeper, we have a controller ready to go that's returning some data from the service. So if we do NX serve, then the name of our app, we'll get a URL we can start hitting. And if I try to do that in a new terminal, I'll get my data back. We also get some spec files in here. These are fully functional, just unit tests set up to test our app. And if I do NX test, then the name of my app, it's gonna start running all my unit tests. And if I go back to my controller and add an unused variable, and I follow the same familiar pattern of NX lint, then the name of my app, I get a lint warning. Let's try a different plugin, Narwhal Express. And I'll use it to generate an app. I'll call it Express API. We again get everything nicely configured and ready to serve some content. But these plugins don't just drop files in your workspace. They're kind of smart. If we pass dash dash help to my generator, we can see that we could have given it a path to a front end project. And that would have generated a proxy configuration for us so we could run both the front end and the back end locally without course issues. NX does everything it can to help you get productive fast without worrying about configuration. We also see we could have used plain JavaScript instead of TypeScript. And we could have even ran it in dry mode where it doesn't actually generate source code files. Really useful for experimenting. And we can go up one level. And instead of options for just the app generator, we can list everything we can do with the plugin. Let's see Nest, for example. Ah, cool, so I can generate a controller. Let's try that. And I'll generate it in my Nest API project. I'll call it users. Cool, we now have a controller with unit tests all set up and connected to it. And if you really feel adventurous, you can just run NX list to see all available plugins. There's one for React and there's even one for Vue. So yes, you can have your front end and back end projects side by side in the same workspace. And you can even scaffold Go projects within your workspace. So now I have an API implemented with the Nest framework and another API using Express. I can use the same command to test the Nest API or the backend Express app. If I want to lint on any of them, it's the same pattern and same for building. By working in an NX workspace, you get this consistency in terms of working with different apps. It doesn't matter that this one is using the Nest framework with the Jest test runner, and this one could have been using pure JavaScript with a totally different test runner. NX abstracts away that configuration for you and gives you a consistent, easy to use CLI. And because of this consistency, we can use another command, run many, to tell it to build all the projects within my workspace. Whatever tools and bundlers need to be invoked when building each app, it's all been abstracted away in this common keyword. Imagine somebody from DevOps, the moment they realize they're dealing with an NX workspace, they don't have to worry about the differences between Express, Nest, or React, and whether they configured and passed all the different options correctly for linting, testing, or building. And now that it's done, we can see all the production assets that just appeared for the two apps here in Dist. We looked at apps. Let's now look at libs, which is currently empty. Let me make sure the node plugin is installed. And I'll generate a new node library called number utils. And I'll pass in the publishable option, which will allow us to publish this library on NPM should we ever need to. 
and then here I'll give it a name of how I want it to appear on NPM. Okay, so we get a new folder in here with some uh, tests all set up. And I can of course run these tests by passing in the name of my lib. So let's make a function that takes in an array of numbers and prints a nice message with their sum. And I'll actually import lodash for this and use its sum function to calculate the actual sum of the numbers in my array. And I'll give this function a slightly better name. Now, if I go to my express API, I can import it and then use it. I can also go to my nest API and import it here as well and then use it. Now, let me serve the express API and in the new terminal, I'll serve nest. And because by default, it would use the same port, I'll input a slightly different value for it. Now, if I call my express API, I can see I get back the correct sum. And if I call my nest API, I also get it back. And I can modify the lib and change it to v2. And when I save, I'll see the results instantly reflected in my dev server. This works because we're using the source code directly. This library wasn't built anywhere. It's not in dist, nor is it in node modules. This path up here, that's just a mapping in the root tsconfig file. That's what libs give you. They allow all your tooling to continue working exactly the same as before. Your development server will work, your editor auto-completion will work, everything just works. But you can now build these well-encapsulated packages and expose only what you need from them. You can share code between different apps. They're similar to libraries you download from NPM, but you don't need to publish them anywhere. They can live fine just in here. They're a great way to maintain your architecture, and when you make it this easy for devs to create and test them, they'll be happy to take initiative in maintaining your architecture. And these options we passed in earlier, we didn't have to do it. But because we did, we can now publish this library to NPM if we ever want to. So if I build this library now, NX will copy in the readme and in the package.json here in dist, it's gonna intelligently pull in only the libraries that it sees that that library depends on based on what it imports. So now you can just run npm publish, point it to this folder, and you've published your lib to the outside world. When you let NX manage your workspace, it can build up knowledge about your apps and libs and as a result, you get access to simpler workflows like this. Oh, and all the commands we've been running, you don't have to remember them. If you prefer a UI, there's an NX console plugin for VS Code where you can view available common NX commands and get guided with different dropdowns and inputs on how to run them. <laughs> but given that it's so easy to create all these apps and lives, you can imagine how this workspace can start growing quickly. Eventually, running tests on all my projects will take too long. Let me go to my express API and remove the dependency on the numbers lib. You'll see why in a bit. Now I'll just commit everything I've changed up until now. And now that I committed, let me make a change to my util lib. Now I'm gonna run NX affected dependency graph. Check this out. This prints out a graph of everything I've changed since the last time I committed. I changed the util lib, and because my nest API depends on it, it's also red. I can also show all the other unchanged packages for the full dependency diagram of my project. Now I can clearly see that the nest API is dependent on the number utils, and they've both been changed in my last commit because they're red but I also see I have this other Express API project which doesn't depend on them. But as you add more libs and more projects to your workspace, this dependency diagram will become more and more useful for visualizing the relationships between them. But this isn't just useful for drawings. We can take advantage of this intricate knowledge of the dependency tree. And instead of linting everything, I can just lint the projects which have been affected by my change since the last commit. I can also compare against any other commit I want, like latest origin master, or even the last five commits. And this works with uh, build and test as well. 
This makes it so easy to build CI systems that scale regardless of how crazy your workspace gets. Now, when I run any command in an X, like building, it's gonna start doing some heavy computation work to build my projects. And we can verify it's been built by looking in dist. But let me remove the whole dist folder now. All my production assets are gone now. And now I'll just run the same build command again, but unlike last time, when I ran it, it completes almost instantly now. So did it actually do anything this time? Well, if we look in this now, we can see that my projects and the built assets are there. And we had just removed the dist folder, so the command worked. Well, turns out, because we are in an NX workspace, all of this has been retrieved from the cache. NX noticed that I'm running a command I've ran before against the same set of files. In other words, I'm trying to build the exact same source code a second time. So NX knows that, and it just pulls the previous terminal output and build assets from the local cache. And caching works with absolutely any command in your workspace, linting, testing, or even end-to-end -end tests. And it works if I use run many as well. Just by using the NX CLI, you're going to start noticing your workspace tasks becoming much faster. We can take this further and install the NX Cloud plugin and initialize it in our workspace. That's it. I've just enabled distributed computation caching. Now imagine I commit all these changes and I push them all the way up to my repo. Now I'll make sure to run a build of all my apps just so everything gets pushed to my cloud cache. And you can see that it's doing the work now and it takes a while longer. But then when my colleague Anna comes in to work in the morning and she pulls my latest changes, so now she has all the files that I changed. Even though she's on a totally different machine, when she does a build of all the projects, she'll just instantly pull my results from the shared NX Cloud cache, just like that. And a bonus feature we get with NX Cloud, we can also enable the GitHub bot on our repositories which gives us full reports of what happened on our CI. We can click this to see how long all the commands took and which ran in parallel versus which waited for each other. We can also see which command succeeded, which failed, and if we click on them, we can see why they failed. And we can even copy this link up here to share with our teammates on Slack and try and get some help without having to paste them long, unformatted terminal output. I really encourage you to check out the NX docs. Join our office hours where you can ask questions live to NX core team members. And there's even a very active NX community Slack channel where you can chat to other NX users.